Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 2-1 of May, June 2019. Um, this one is Add Math paper 2. Uh, before we begin, just to advise, when you do past papers, the most important thing is to understand how to do those questions. Now, with that being said, let's move on to question number one. So here we have, find the values of x for which this equation is true. So the first step is, as you can see, here we have 20, here we have a uh, function. Let's first expand this, right? So we will have 6x squared plus 7x. And then let's send this number to the left-hand side, become minus, more equal to 0. Now we can find the critical values of this one. So critical values, we have to equate that to 0. 20 equal to 0. Now we have to factorize this quadratic equation. Now we have to try to see uh, what works to get plus 7. So 6 can be uh, 6 times 1 or it can be 3 times 2. Let's try 3 times 2 for now. And what is 20? 20 can be uh, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and it can be 4 times 5. So let's see if we can try um let's try five let's try five right five times four so five is here and four is here now to get plus seven we can have plus 15 minus eight so that is uh exact correct now x is equal to four over three x is equal to minus five over two now these are your critical values now you have to use a graph to find the values for which this is true now the thing is, if you guys don't know how to factorize, no problem. You can go to your list of formulas. You can always use your formula for these kind of equations to find the values of x, okay? Now to find the values of x, we have to draw a graph to understand what's happening. This is your line of zero. And since this is positive, it will look something like this, okay? So this is your two critical values. This will be minus 5 over 2, and this will be 4 over 3. Now we want this equation to be more than 0, to be above 0. So this is true for this part and this part. So basically, x has to be less or equal to this, or it can be more or equal to 4 over 3. So that's the two set of values of x for which it is more than 0, and these two will be your answer. That is question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. Two variables of x and y are related by this equation for which x is positive value. Now first one is we have to find dy by dx. So as you can see, this one is a fraction, so you have to use your quotient rule. So dy by dx is equal to, so first thing we have to write down the denominator as it is, then multiply by the differentiation of the numerator and then minus then we have to write down the numerator as it is then multiply by the differentiation of the denominator and then finally you take everything divide by the square of the denominator so now we just have to simplify uh, one by one on top you will have this is the same this will become 1 over x minus, this is the same, this will become 3x squared. And everything divided by x, so when you have to bring this in, 3 times 2 will be 6. So now we just have to simplify. Uh, this one will cancel out. 2, and you will have 2, sorry, not 2. This will be just x squared minus 3x squared ln of x divide by x power 6. So now we can divide by x squared everywhere. So for example, let me show you guys. If you factorize x squared on the top, you will have 1 minus 3 ln x. On the base, you will have x power 6. So this will cancel out. This will become 4. So finally, your answer will be 1 minus 3 ln x over x power 4. This is shown as required. That is for part one. Now for part two, 
Hence, find the approximate change in y as the value of x increases from e to e plus h, where h is small. So pretty easy. Whenever you see hence, you have to use your answer from part 1. Okay, so how do you find the approximate change in y? Pretty easy. It is equal to dy by dx at the value of x equal to this value, e times the value of h. So first, let's find this value. What is dy by dx at the value of x equal to, t to e? So dy by dx at x equal to 2 is what? 1 minus 3 ln exponential over exponential power 4. That will be 1 minus, this becomes 1. So you will have 1 minus 3 is minus 2 over exponential power 4. Replace back, you will have minus 2 times the value of h. So your answer will be minus 2h over exponential power 4. And that is your answer for part 2 and question number 2. Now let's move on to uh, question number 3. Sketch the graph of y equal to uh, 5x plus minus 3 on the axis below, showing the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the axis. So uh, let's do this step by step. So the first thing I like to do is I like to ignore the uh, modulus. For example, I like to write y equal to 5x minus 3, like a normal, normal line equation. Now I would say at x equal to 0, what is the value of y? y will be minus 3. And if y equal to 0, what is the value of x? x will be 3 divided by 5, that will be 0 0.6. You can always check using your uh, calculator. So uh, 5, so 3 divided by 5, 0 0.6. So here we have the point of where it crosses the axis. Now we can just label them. Uh, for example, I can uh, I can make a scale just to have an idea where it might be. This is one, two, three, four, five, and this is one, two, three, four. Let's continue this one. That will be one, two, three. So the first one I have is. 0 0.6 and 0. So let's measure 0 0.6 will be well. That will be about right here. Okay, that is the value of 0 0.60. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4. This is minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. And the other point will be um, we have 0 and minus 3. 0 minus 3 will be right here. So the way we do this is, we have to pretend we are joining these two lines and then only draw the one that is on top, okay, on top. And then the one that is below will be reflected back up. So 0, 3 will become, so 0 minus 3 will become 0, 3. So now we'll be joined with this one. And that will be your equation of the line with modulus. Modulus means it cannot have a negative value, it has to be a positive value. Now that's it for part 1, now let's move on to part 2. So solve this equation where the modulus curve is equal to 2 minus x. So what you can do here is you can, you can draw something just to understand what's happening. So what is this equation? y equal to 2 minus x. If x is 0, y is 2. If y is 0, x is 2. So let's see where is the line. The line will be going through this point and this point. So from where you can see this line will cut the curve at, I mean not the line, at two points. So it means that you will have to have two equations. So just to have a, an, an idea how many uh, values you will need to need to find for this one. Now we can solve this, so basically, first one you will write down, 5x minus 3 is equal to positive 2 minus x, that will be 5x minus 3 is equal to 2 minus x. 
So we send this over here, that will become um, 6x becomes 5, x will be 5 over 6. That is one of the solution. Now the other one you have to write, 5x minus 3 is equal to minus this side. And that is 5x minus 3 is equal to minus 2 plus x. Send this over here, you will have 4x is equal to 1, x will be 1 over 4. These will be the two values valid for this equation. And that is question number 3. Now let's move on to question number 4. So without using a calculator, it means you have to show every step of your work. Express this equation in the form of this, where p and q are integers. Integers are just whole numbers, basically, which is minus 1, 0, 1, keep going on, give me minus 2, keep going on. So it needs to be whole numbers, okay? Now, how do we simplify this step by step? First, let's simplify the top. On top, you have root of 5 minus 3 square. That will be root of 5 square minus 2 times root of 5 times 3 plus 9. That will be 5 minus 6 root of 5 plus 9, and that should be 14 minus 6 root of 5. So that is for the top value. Now replace back, you will have 14 minus 6 root of 5 over the base plus 1. Now, how to simplify thirds? You have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this one. That will be root 5 minus 1. Root 5 minus 1. Now again, we have to simplify uh, one by one. The base will be what? It will be root 5 plus 1 times root 5 minus 1. This one looks a lot like a plus b times a minus b, which is equal to a square minus b square. So same thing here, that will be root 5 square minus 1 square. That will be 5 minus 1, that will be 4. So the base will become 4. How about the top? Let's see. The top, we have 14 minus 6 root 5 times root 5 minus 1. Now, 14 times this will give you 14 root 5 minus 14. And this one, minus 6 root 5 times this, that will give you minus 6 times 5 plus 6 root 5. So you will have uh, 14 root 5 minus 14 minus 30 plus 6 root 5. So this plus this will give you 20 root 5. And this is minus 44. This is the top value, and that is your bottom value. So just replace each one back in their position. On top you will have 20 root 5 minus 44 divided by 4. So now we can divide by 4, you will have 5 root 5 minus 11. So the values of P is 5, Q is minus 11. This is your answer as required in this form. That is question number 4. Let's move on to question number 5. So here we have a velocity time graph, as you can see here. It is a particle traveling in a straight line. So part one, find the acceleration during the last six seconds of the motion. As you can see, the last six seconds will be here, the base here, k to k plus six, that is six. And what is the height? The height is 10. So as you guys know already, when you have a velocity time graph, the gradient of the graph will be equal to your acceleration. So acceleration here is height, 10, divided by 6. But since it is going down, acceleration will be minus, right? 10 divided by 6, that will be, uh, let's simplify, minus 5 over 3. That will be meters per second square. Now, that will be a different story if they ask you for, uh, let's say if they ask you for deceleration. Then your answer will be, 5 over 3, okay? 
So that is a side note just for you to uh, ha see the difference. It is asking you for acceleration and if it is going down you have to write minus but if, it, if the question was asking you for deceleration it will be just the value. That is for part one. Now uh, for part two, the particle travels with a constant velocity for 23 seconds. Find the value of k. So pretty easy. Go back to your graph. Where do you see the particle travel at a constant velocity? Okay, by observation you see that at first it was increasing, then between 4 and then k, the value was constant. So it traveled for 23 seconds at a constant speed, so 4 plus 23, this will be 27. So the value of k is 27. So last one, using your answer to part 2, find the total distance traveled by the particle. So when you have a, uh, a velocity time graph, the distance traveled is equal to the area under graph. Okay, that is something we need to know, okay? Area under graph. So what is the shape of the graph if you observe? This one seems to be a trapezium, right? So if you guys don't know how to find the area of trapezium, you can always break it down into simpler pieces. For example, if you see, we have uh, we have part A, it is triangle, part B, it is a rectangle, and this is a triangle. So area of trapezium is equal to half times sum of parallel sides. So this side is uh, 23, and this will be, so this is 27 plus 6, that will be what? 20, 33. So 33 plus 23 times the height in between, that will be 10. So let's see the value, half, 33 plus 23, times 10, that will be 280. So that is how do you find the area, area of trapezium. But let's say if you did not know the uh, formula, you can always break it down into pieces. Area of A will be half times base times height. B will be of rectangle, that is 23, times the height, which is 10. And then C, that will be triangle, half, time base, time height. So let's see the values to see what we get. Half times 2, times 4, sorry, times 10, that will be 20. This is 230, and that will be 30. Let's check. Half times 60 times 10, sorry, <laughs> 6, not 60. Half times 6 times 10, 30. Now plus everything, that should give you. 280, the same answer as this one. Okay, so your distance traveled will be equal to 280 and meters for the unit. And that is your question number five. Now let's move on to question number six. So part A, we have a matrix given to you. Given that A does not have an inverse, find the values of X. So values means many values. So when does a, does a matrix does not have an inverse? It is only true when the determinant is equal to zero, right? So how do you find determinant? You have to cross multiply. So x plus three times x minus three minus two x times minus x. That should be equal to zero. Now expand, you will have x squared minus nine plus 2x squared is equal to 0. So simplify, 1x squared plus 2x squared, that will be 3x squared, is equal to 9. x squared will be 3. And finally, x is equal to plus minus root of 3. That is your two values of x for the first part. Now for part b, we have two matrices, b and c. We have to write down the order of matrix B. The order is basically how we have the uh, number of rows times the number of columns. So how many rows does matrix B has? We have one row, two, and three. So that will be three times columns, only two, that will be two. So that will be the order of matrix B, three times two, three by two. Now part C, the matrix C is equal to this. 
So this one, as you can see, we have three rows and three columns. It is called a three by three matrix. Now I explain why CB is not going to be equal to BC. So let's observe what is CB. So B is a three by two matrix and C is a what? It is a two by three matrix. So let's see what is um, possible here. So if you multiply C by B, what is that? C is a 2 by 3 matrix, and B is a 3 by 2 matrix. So your results will have to give you a 2 by 2 matrix. Basically for the result, we have to look at this one and this one, which is a 2 by 2 matrix. So since you can write, since CB, will be a 2 by 2 matrix CB cannot be equal to BC which is a 3 by 3 matrix right and that will be your question number 6 now for question number 7 the variables X and Y and U are such that this is given to you by these three two equations now part 1 state the rate of change of y with respect to u. So we have to find dy by du. So basically, differentiate that, that will become sec square u. That is first part. Now for part two, hence, hence meaning using the value from part one, find the rate of exchange of y with respect to x, giving your answer in terms of x. So we have to find dy by dx. So first we have to find an equation that connects those values. On top we have dy, we have to multiply. On the base we have dx, okay? Now, what connects y and x? If you see, y and x have u in common, so we have to have du and du, okay? So dy by du we know already, which is this one. What is du by dx? So let's find out. So we have x is equal to u cubed plus 1. Let's find dx by du first. That will be 3u squared plus 0. That is 3u squared. So based on that, finally, to find du by dx, as you can see, we have to bring this up and bring this down. So we have to flip this upside down. That will be 1 over 3 u square. So finally the value will be dy by du is sec square u times 1 over 3 u square. Okay, so that will be the answer, but it is right now in terms of um, in terms of u, we have to change that to um, x. Let me see. Let's first evaluate this first. We have sec square u over 3 u square. That is your value of dy by dx in terms of u. But how can we change that to the um, to make it become x? If you observe, what do we know from those values? So here we have something. We can uh, try to play with that. We have x equal to u square plus 1. u cube is cube x minus 1. So u will be cubic root of x minus 1. So you can replace the value of u by this to find your dy by dx. So finally, that will be sec square u is cubic root of x minus 1 divided by 3 times cubic root of x minus 1 square. That will be your answer of dy by dx in terms of x. And of course, that could be your that could be the answer for uh, the question. Uh, you can always simplify. You can find other ways of doing this question as well, as long as you, you explain this one in terms of x, and you're good to go. Okay, that will be your question number seven. Now let's see what is question number. Eight. Okay, so let's move on to question number eight. The diagram shows a right angle triangle ABC with AB equal to eight and the angle ABC is pi by 2. So pi by 2 is what? Pi is 180 divided by 2, that is 90. 
So this angle here will be 90 degrees. Okay, so ABC is a right angle triangle. Now, the points D and E lie on AC and BC respectively. As you can see, D and E. Now, BAD and ECD are sectors of the circles with center A and C. So this one is a sector. This one is also a sector. So first thing is, what is this angle? So as we can see, we have triangle ABC. The sum of all the angles in the triangle is 180. So this one will be 180 minus 90 minus this one. So this one is what? 2. So 2 times pi, pi is 180, divided by 9. That is 40. So this is actually 40 degrees, if you want to write degrees. So that will be 180 minus 90 minus 40. That will be 50 degrees. Now, if you want to, you can convert degrees to uh, radians. So we know that pi is equal to 180 degrees. So 50 degrees will be pi divided by 180 times 50. And that will be 5 pi over 18. This is the angle 5 pi over 18. OK, so let's move on to the first question. So here we have to find the area of triangle of the shaded region. So by observation, how would you find this area? So I would say we can first find the area of the big triangle and then minus the area of these two sectors. Let's call this one A and this one B. Okay, so how do you find the area of, of the... Uh, let's find the area of the big triangle first. So we need to find something. We need to find... Let's find the side of AC. So how would you find AC? So. Let's make a drawing. We have A, B, and this is C, right? And this is your point C. For example, this is A, and this is B. And this is a right angle. And here we have 40 degrees. Here we have 8. So we can find C by using Sokatoa. So we have to use cos in this case. Cos of 40 degrees is equal to 8 over AC. So AC will be equal to 8 divided by cos of 40. That will be 10.44. So AC is 10.44 and this is also 8 because it is a sector with radius 8 and this one will be what? Minus 8, that will be 2.44. So this one will be 2.44 and this one also has to be 2.44 because it is also a sector with center C. Now what else? Now we can find the area of triangle ABC. So let's find the area. So let me write this down. So the whole area will be area of triangle ABC. So to find the area of triangle we can use the formula half times sine of the angle which is 40 degrees and times the two side which is 10.44 times 8. This is 10.44, this is 8. So that will be half times sine 40 times 10.44 times 8. That will be 26.8428. This is the area of the big triangle. Now let's find the area of A. As you can see, area of A will be area of this sector, pretty easy. So area of A, that will be half R square times theta. Half R square is the radius. Theta is the angle. That will be this value. Half times 64 times 2 pi over 9. That will be 22.3402. Uh, now we have to find the uh, area of B. So let's do that. Um, area of B. So same formula again because C, uh, C, E, D is also a sector. So half R square theta. Half the radius is 2.44 square and the angle is uh, 5 pi over 18. As you have shown here, right? This is the angle. Now we just have to uh, evaluate the value times 5 pi over 18. That should be 
5977. So finally, to find the value of the area, so area, um, area of shaded region, that will equal to the whole area, which is this one, 28, minus area of sector, and minus area of the other sector. So let's see, what do we get? 26.8428 minus 22.3402 minus 2.5977 that will be 1.90 correct to 3SF and that will be your area of the shaded region okay that is for part one now let's move on to uh, part two we have to find the perimeter of the region now to find the perimeter if you observe we will need this length BD DE and BE so how can you find the length of BE? So, so same step. To find BE, we can just use this triangle ABC. It is a right angle triangle. Right. This one is 40 degrees. This is 8. We have to find this one. Let's call it X. So we have to use Sokatwa, and that will be 10, because that is the uh, A side, and this is your O side. We have to use 10 or 40 is equal to x over 8. So x will be 8 times 10 of 40. That will be 6.713. That is your length of BC. Now BE will be what? This minus 2.44. That will be 4.2728. Okay, so now to find the uh, the perimeter, if you observe, we just need to find the length of arc BD. That will be equal to arc length, which is uh, R times theta. R is 8, theta is 2, pi over 9. So 16 over 9, sorry, 16 pi over 9. That will be 5.585. And we have to find the arc of DE as well, which is this one. That will be the same formula. So radius is 2.44 times the angle, which is 5 pi over 18. 2.44 times 5 pi over 18. That will be 2.129. And finally, we have to add the side of BE, which is 4.2728. That is B, right? So let's add all this together to find the perimeter. So 5.585 plus 2.129 plus 4.2728. That will be about 11.9868. But you have to write down your value correct to 3SF. So that will be 12.0 centimeters for the perimeter. And that will be your question number eight. Now let's move on to question number nine. So we have 11 different television sets are to be displayed in a line in a large shop. Okay, so all these televisions, they are all different. So part one, find the number of different ways the televisions can be arranged. So because they are all different, let's say uh, we have 11 space that we can arrange them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 TVs. So for the first TV, where can I place it? I can place it anywhere. We can put, let's say we put it here, we will have 11 option. Then we have 10 option, 9, keep going on, you'll have 1. So basically, your answer will be 11 factorial for the number of options. That will be. 39,916,800 for the number of ways to arrange the TV. Now, uh, moving on to part two. Of these televisions, six are made by company A and five are made by company B. So we have 11, that will be six by A and five by B. Now the question here is, find the number of different ways that televisions can be arranged so that no two sets made by A 
are next to each other so we don't have something like a right so we, we don't want that so one thing is so one thing we can do is we can first fix the position of b so that we can put the position of a so let's say b will be positioned right here this will be b b b b and b so we have five ways so not five ways but five positions for them and they are all different that will be five factorial ways of arranging the television b that's the first step now for this six one we can either put the first one here 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 or here so we have as you can see to put the first a let's say i put television a here i have six options then i have five options then i have four options three options left that will be second option and last one will be this so that will be this times six factorial times six factorial that will be eight six four zero zero for the number of ways now let's move on to part b a group of people is to be selected from five women and three men now calculate the total number of different groups of four people that have exactly three women so we want to choose four people if you need three women we have to have one man right so from the five women we choose three and for the three men we choose only one that will be five choose three times three choose one that will be 30 your answer will be 30 ways of choosing your group now for part two uh, calculate the number of different groups of at most four people that will be less or equal to four which can be one two three and four okay so these are the number of people we can have in the groups where the number of women is the same as the number of men so it can be possible in group of two and four because we can here we can have one man and one woman we can have two men and two women now let's say we choose next one will be three men and three women but it, but it will be six it will violate this condition so we cannot choose this one we can only choose for those two so so from uh, we have from the five women so from the three men we choose one and times five we choose one and same thing choose two times five choose two so three choose one times five choose one that is 15 and three choose two times five choose two that will be 30 and that will be 45 for the total number of ways and that will be your question number nine let's move on to question number 10 so in this question solutions to this question by accurate drawing will not be accepted so we can only uh, use calculation to find the answers okay so point a and b have coordinates these two respectively and the line l is given to you by this equation okay now part one Given that the gradient of AB is this, find the value of P, okay? So we have the point A is this, the value of B is this. How do you find the value of P? So let's find the gradient of AB. So as you guys know already, to find the gradient, we have to use the formula, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, and that should give you 1 over 3. So now if you simplify, let's see what we get. Um, so 4 minus 1 is, so 4 minus 3 is 1 over 1 minus p, and that is supposed to give you 1 over 3. Next step is to cross multiply, you will have 3 is 1 minus p. So finally, p has to be, um, so we send p over here, and we send uh, this over here, that will become minus 2. p will be minus 2. So just to show, so p will be on this side you will have p and one minus three minus two now moving on to part two show that l is perpendicular to the bisector so show that l is a perpendicular bisector of ab so ab has gradient of one over three the line l is given to you by 3x plus y equal to 2. 
so now the first thing is what we can do here is we can we can find we can show the equation of a line so y is equal to mx plus c so let's first express this equation in terms of y equal to x so that will become y equal to minus 3x plus 2 that is the equation so the first thing we have here we can check is that the gradient here is m of y, so m of l the gradient of l is equal to minus 3 so that is the first good sign because we have shown that m b the gradient of a b times the gradient of l is equal to minus 1 so by showing this you have proven that it is so by showing this thing you have shown that a b and l they are perpendicular perpendicular that's the first thing that you need to show the next thing you need to show for it to be the perpendicular bisector of ab we have to show that this line passes through the midpoint of ab so how do you find the midpoint of ab so we know the formula which is x1 plus x2 so which is p plus 1 which is p is minus 2 plus 1 over 2 and then will be uh, this one is y1 plus y2 3 plus 4 over 2 that is the midpoint if you um, if you um, simplify that will be minus 1 over 2 7 over 2 so basically we have to show that the line L passes through those two points so let's take the value of x equal to minus half and let's find the value of y y will be minus 3 times minus half plus 2 that will be 3 over 2 plus 2 2 is just 2 over 1 that will be over 2 that will be 3 plus 4 and that is 7 over 2 and this is shown as required this is equal to this so hence you conclude that L is the perpendicular bisector of AB so if you guys uh, don't really understand what's happening here always to make a drawing for example let's say I have the line AB this is my line AB and I have a line L let's say this is my line L this is L so we have to show that this line L is a perpendicular bisector of AB it means that it cuts the line AB exactly in half at the midpoint of of AB so first we have to show that the midpoint also is present on A this is what we did here we have shown that the midpoint is also on the line L okay that's the one we've shown here and we have shown that it is also perpendicular by showing this thing so by doing those two we have shown that L is a perpendicular bisector of AB now for part 3 given that C is a point Q minus 10 lies on L find the value of Q so pretty easy L is Y equal to minus 3x plus 2 now this is your x, this is your y so y is minus 10 x is q plus 2 so from this you will have 3q is equal to 12 so q is equal to 4 now for part 4 find the area of triangle ABC so the point is given to you by minus 2, 3 and the point B is given to you by 1, 4 and the point C is given to you by 4 minus 10 so in this way we can always use our formula which is the array method you write half modulus of the first point minus 2 3 1 4 and 4 minus 10 so when you begin with a point you have to finish with the same point now we just have to simplify half first we have to multiply in this direction so minus 2 times 4 minus 8 plus minus 10 plus 12 minus and then in this direction then I'll be 3 plus 16 plus 20 now simplify minus 8 
minus 10 plus 12, that is minus 6, minus 3 plus 16, plus 20, that will be 39. Now minus 6 minus 39 is what? Sorry, minus 6 minus 39, that should be minus 45. So we have half modulus of minus 45, which is equal to half of 45. That will be 22.5 units square for the area of triangle ABC. Now let's move on to uh, question number 11. So we have to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So if you observe, what is cosec? Cosec of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta. Now what is cot of theta? It is equal to cos divided by sine. So now we can simplify the top. The top we have cosec theta minus cot theta, which is equal to 1 over sine theta minus cos over sine theta. Because they have the same base, we can combine them together. You will have sine theta. That will be 1 minus cos theta. So we know that the top becomes this. We can just replace in here. You will have 1 minus cos theta over sine theta divided by sine theta. That will equal to 1 minus cos theta over sine square theta. Okay, so that is the first step. Now you have to simplify this into this. Now, if you know from your list of formulas, you have the identity, which is sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. Now, sine theta is equal to 1 minus cos square theta. Okay, let's see what do we have. So replace this by this in this. So you have 1 minus cos theta over 1 minus cos square theta. So now you have to realize this is also equal to 1 square minus cos square, which is 1 minus cos theta times 1 plus cos theta. So you will have 1 minus cos theta on top and below you will have divide by 1 minus cos theta times 1 plus cos theta. So these two will cancel out. So you will have 1 over 1 plus cos theta remaining. This is shown as required. And this is your answer for the question. Shown as required. Right. Now uh, for part 2, hence, meaning using that value from part 1, solve this equation. As you have seen, this is equal to 1 over 1 plus cos theta. This is equal to 5 over 2. Now we have to cross multiply. You will have 2 equal to 5 plus 5 cos theta. Next step, we have to make cos theta become your subject of formula. So that will become 5 cos theta is equal to minus 3. So cos theta is equal to minus 3 divided by 5, which is minus 0 0.6. You can check. Here you go. Now, the value of cos is negative. If you guys know, when cos is negative, it has to be in your second quadrant, which is 180 minus, let's call this one theta hat, and also in your third quadrant which is 180 plus theta hat. So if let's first find the value of theta hat. So theta hat is equal to cos inverse of the positive value of this. So we have to use degrees. So cos inverse of 3 divided by 5, that will be 53.1 degrees. But our answer is not theta hat, we have to find theta. Theta will be found according to your quadrant. So theta is equal to 
first one is 180 minus theta hat of t3.1 that will be 126.9 and then we have 180 plus theta hat that will be 233.1 so we have two values available now we have to check if they are within this range so this one is outside this one is inside so now we can check uh, we can try to add 360 to see if it is inside or out let's try 126.9 plus 360 so it will be outside in that case only one value is valid which is this one this is your value of data 233.1 will be satisfying this equation that is question uh, part a now let's move on to question let's see what else we have Now let's move on to part B of the uh, question. So we have tan 3 sigma is equal, uh, minus 4 equal to minus half. Now when tan is negative, you guys know already, it should be in your second quadrant and your fourth quadrant. This is pi minus theta and this is 2 pi minus theta. So uh, let's solve step by step. So first we have to find the value of theta. Theta is not the same of this angle. Theta will be tan inverse of the positive value of half. So here we have to use radians. That will be 0 0.464, correct to 3SF. Now next step is to find the value of this angle. So 3, this, minus 4. For this, we have to look at the quadrants. First one is pi minus this, so pi will be minus 0 0.464, that should be 2.68. And then we have 2 pi minus the value again, 0 0.464, that will be 5.82. Now next step, we can send this 4 over here, you will have 3 sigma is equal to 6.68 and 9.82. So now we have to look at the range given to us. As you can see, the range of sigma is between 0 and what is that value? Pi divided by 2, that is 1.57. Now here we have 3 sigma. If you check, 3, that will be 0. So times 3, that should be 4.71. But here you see the two values here are already outside of this range so what we need to do we need to decrease them so we have to minus 2 pi and minus 2 pi for those two values so let's try 6.68 minus 2 pi that will be 0 0.397 and that will be 9.82 minus 2 pi and this will be 3.54 for the value of 3 sigma now sigma will be 0 0.397 divided by 3 that will be 0 0.132 and 3.54 divided by 3 that will be 1.18 so here you go this will be the two values for sigma is between this range okay one to question number 12 given that we have this integration equal to 50 find the exact value of a so you must show all your working so step by step integration of a 0 of exponential 2x by dx so first thing you write down the same thing which is this and then divide by the differentiation of the power that will be 2 and now we have limits of a and 0 solve one by one so first one is a we will have exponential of 2a over 2 minus exponential of 0 over 2. That will be, if you take a half, you will have exponential of 2a minus 1, and all this value is supposed to give you 50. 
now we have to solve for the value of a so exponential to a minus 1 is equal to 100 if you send 2 here right now exponential to a is equal to 1 0 1 now next step 2a is equal to ln of 1 0 1 so a will be half of ln 1 0 1 now you can leave your answer right here and that will be enough if you want to simplify some more you can also do that that will become ln of 101 power half which is ln of square root of 101 so both can be your answer that will be for part one now let's move on to part b a curve is such that dy by dx equal to this equation the curve passes through the point this is your x value and your y value right now first one is find the equation of the curve so whenever it's the equation of the curve it, it is asking you for the value of y y is equal to integration of dy by dx so let's do that y will be integration of dy by dx 5x dx and that is equal to 3x minus 2 that becomes sine 5x divided by 5 plus c so now we have to find this value of c using those points. So y is 8 pi over 5 is equal to 3 times x, which is this one, minus 2 sine of 5 pi over 5 over 5 plus c. So these two cancel out. Sine of pi is 0. So this whole thing here will become 0, so you will have 8 pi over 5 minus 3 pi over 5 is equal to c. So finally, c will be equal to 5 pi over 5, which is equal to pi. So now we have to write down the uh, y equation. So y is equal to 3x minus 2 over 5 sine of 5x plus pi value. That is your y equation. Now finally we have to integrate y as you can see here. So let's do this step by step. So that will be 3x minus 2 over 5 sine 5x plus pi with respect to dx. That will be 3x squared divided by 2 minus 2 over 5 that will become minus cos, right? Minus cos, that will become plus here. And then divide by 5 plus this. Of course, you have to write plus c. Now we can, of course, simplify this. That will become 3x squared over 2 plus 2 over 25 cos 5x plus this and plus c. And then finally, we have to have the limits here to solve this value. So let's do that. So limits of pi over pi by 2 of y by dx, that will be this right here. Pi over pi by 2. Now one by one. We have to first replace the value of x by pi, so you will have 3 over 2 pi squared plus 2 over 25 cos 5 pi plus pi squared. This is over 1, of course, that is the first part. Minus, replace the value of x by this one now, you will have 3 over 2 times pi squared over 4 plus 2 over 25 cos of the value of what? Um, that will be 5 pi over 2 plus pi squared over 2. So let's find the values of these two. Cos of 5 pi is what? Minus 1. So this will become minus 2 over 25. What is this plus this? This is 1, so that will become uh, so let me make it become the same base that will become plus 5 over 2 pi squared. 
minus the first part, minus this one will be. So that will be 3 pi square over 8. What is that value? 5, so cos 5 pi over 2. That is 0, so this will become 0. And this plus this will be what? So let's solve this on the side. So let's make it, make it, be, make it become the same base of 8. That will become 3 pi square plus 4 pi square. That will become 7 pi square over 8 minus here. And here we have 5 over 2 pi square. And here it is at the same space. So here we have to simplify these two. As you can see, we have different bases. We have to make it become the same base of 8 times 4 times 4. That will be 20 pi square minus 7 pi square. That will become what? Let's check. So that will become 13 pi square over 8. So your answer finally will become 13 over 8 pi square minus 2 over 25. And that is your integration for question number 12. So that was the last question of this paper. I hope you find this somewhat helpful. As always, if you guys have any questions, let me know, let me know in the comments. And I will get back to you guys as soon as possible. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you soon.